Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Sid Meier's Civilization VI in our Eight Ages of Khmer series. So we ended the first episode. Um, I, I want to note this really quickly because I talked about it with some commenters and then I loaded up the save and I was like, ah, they were probably right. Uh, I was uh, losing my mind apparently in the final 30 seconds of the first episode because I mentioned that we were uh, going to put a city like here, which of course is not possible because Auckland is there. So when we look at the city settlement you know, map, the closest we could possibly get a city to those horses is over here. So if we wanted to get those horses from Auckland, we could, but it would have to be a coastal city, which wouldn't be the worst thing because we could get um, a lot of benefit from that, you know, having, you know, Auckland be a, uh, you know, just being suzerain of Auckland, as we discussed last episode. If you need a reminder, that's why. Shallow water tiles you own provide plus one production. So... You know, coastal cities would be kind of production powerhouses. So if I picked the right spot, let's take a quick look and see actually where a good spot for a coastal city over here would be. We could put one, well, Valletta's right here too. Hang on. Let's go back to the settler map. Interesting. All right, we could technically put a city right frickin' there. Now, we wouldn't get the horses. But we have lots of food tiles in the form of jungle. And we could chop all this down for extra production. The city would build up really quickly. And we would have uh, some crabs, some fish, and lots of shallow water tiles offshore. Now, the only problem with that is it's not near a mountain. We wouldn't be able to build an aqueduct there. So that's actually not ideal. I think I might prefer to be up here, to be near the horses, hopefully, assuming Auckland doesn't expand into them before long, which they probably will because that's the most viable tile near them. So they, well, they could go for the sheep first, but if they go for the horses, then we'll just have to become suzerain of Auckland to get the horses from them. But let's say we're going to settle over here. We want the silk. We want the mercury. Mm, yeah, if we put a city right here, we'll be in range of the mercury, the horses. It would have to be here in order to be three away from the mercury, but we could do it. And then we would have... Hopefully there's more out there in terms of sea resources, but those crabs would be in range too. So not the worst spot. Um, still wouldn't be able to build an aqueduct. But it would be a production powerhouse, and we got a, and we would get a lot of resources we need. There's there's a lot to support a city right there. So, not the worst uh, city location to just kind of have one over in a safe spot where there's no civs to threaten it. So we're gonna think about that with our next settler. I'll think about other options as well. But all right, so someone's built Stonehenge. Unsurprising. That means the first great prophet just went out. Let's take a quick look. All right, we are the only ones progressing towards the next great prophet, who is Siddhartha Gautama, and that's actually very appropriate that the great prophet we should get would be Siddhartha because we are going to go for uh, Mahayana Buddhism. So that's that's pretty freaking cool. So let's, um, oh good, our warriors arrived back home. Let's just put him on, well, should I scout with him a bit? I'm not going to go far. Let's, let's go up here. Let's have a look around. Also, I've got 135 gold at the moment. Let's take a quick look at when I'll be able to buy anything. All right, traders will be 160. Builders will be 195. So actually... I might buy a trader in a bit to support um, Hari Hala. Hang on, got to look at this again. Hari Haralaya. Okay, Hari Haralaya. I'm going to try and get that on top of my head so I don't have to stare at it every time I'm trying to talk about that city. All right, we're almost to our fifth Skill citizen in Angkor Thom. Is craftsmanship. And... Sorry, Sean. Um, all right, we've already got our Pantheon, so I think I probably need to switch away from this. Extra production towards builders is tempting, but I like this even more. Plus one production in all cities. I haven't really dealt with barbarians a lot, so I'm going to risk keeping survey open for now. It hasn't helped that much, but you never know. If you find, like, one more ancient wonder, then we'll see how it goes. I'm going to bring this scout up the coast so that they can really see what's going on along these tiles. What's that? Ooh, cobble has been def No! I am fond of pigs. Dogs look up to us. Cats look down on us. Pigs treat us as equals. So England just helped assign their own death warrant. I am going to be going after them, especially now that they took Cobble. Uh, the <laughs> oh, at least they're not going for Auckland just yet, but we're going to have to put a city down here probably to protect Auckland from London. And we're going to need to go for, for England cities pretty soon because one of the things you need to do, I think, on higher difficulty levels is you can't not fight. You can't be a builder-style player without going in and, and taking some cities from the AI in order to catch up to the other AI, like just to give yourself some extra cities while you're building your other ones. So 
we're going to have to go to war against London and maybe even against Congo because they're down here, but we'll see. All right, so we have finished animal husbandry. We can now build pastures and camps. And actually, I wonder if that... No, it didn't change anything about how much production we're getting at Angkor Thom, but that's fine. All right, so we're about to be finished with our monument, which finishing these is going to be very, very handy. All right, production focus still does nothing for you, unsurprisingly. All right, let's see. For our next tech... I mean, we have a desert city, so we could potentially go for the pyramids. And we would need walls soon anyway if we're going to be at war with people. Archery could also be handy because we're going to be fighting London pretty soon. Um, fighting England. I think walls, encampments. So wait, let me go for bronze working. Well, mm, yeah, let me go for bronze working first. And then we'll look at masonry and archery. We're going to have some military focused techs for a bit. But I also, before long, especially once we've founded this city, which I'm going to try and do soon, before long we're going to go for sailing. See if we can find anything up here. That would be nice if there weren't really anything going on up this direction. Okay. Now, at what point was it that I could buy a trader? I think it was... It's 170 now. It's gone up. I need a trader, but I need a settler more. I also need a campus. A couple of good spots for a campus, but I don't want to spend that gold right now. I'd rather wait for the trader, so... Let's definitely go ahead and get that settler going. I take you off of food focus. Yeah. You'll be done in a few... Yeah, I'm just going to have it on no focuses for now. 11 turns away and 8 turns away for that settler. And again, we're going to... I think with this next city, I might go ahead and put a city down here. Are there horses where I could really take advantage of that? That'd be nice. There's some diamonds. I could kind of seal off Congo's progress, but that would, that would be a bit more of a provocative move. Neither of them would like that. There are some luxury resources near them, though, so. Let's see. I am going to need also to have a builder soon so that we can improve this citrus and get a luxury resource because we have an amenity problem in Angkor Thom. The amenity problem might go away slightly when we get our settler because the population will drop. Oh, interesting. Barbarian Quadrarim off the coast of our capital. Not too far away. That's kind of frustrating. Ah, there's some jade up there. That's nice. England has progressed to the Classical Era. Of course they have. England has switched governments to the Classical Republic. Of course they have. Are you firing at my warrior? That's not nice. I'm just trying to scout. Let me mind my business. Ah, we found an encampment. Now I might try and kill that with the warrior, because they're close enough. I really am going to follow the coastline with this scout. I want to really find out what... Ooh, hey, look, whales. Not really in a spot where we could get them, though. Okay. Now, we're, we're going to be able to buy the trader pretty soon, so I'm not going to build the trader outright. I think the holy side will probably be the next... Probably be, oh, man. <laughs> well, see, now we have to spend money to get it. So what do we do? We need the trader first, really. I could just queue up a builder. That would be one way to do it, because we have more. T we're going to have more tiles to improve soon. I could do that. What about a campus? You could build a campus outright right there and have it started. Ooh, that's not a bad idea. Because I don't have to spend any money to do that. Yeah, let's do that. Let's put a campus right there. So we can have that started. It's a few turns away, unfortunately, but I can live with that. We're going to try and make our way around to that barbarian encampment. Assuming someone else doesn't kill it first, actually. It looks like someone's working on it. I'm going to move all the way over there. Well, that actually didn't do any good. But just the principle of the thing. I am going to go out on that peninsula, for sure. Almost to turn 40. We have our settler on the way. Look back over the past, with its changing empires that rose and fell. And you can foresee the future, too. Right, let me look at policies really quickly. I'm pretty happy with this at the moment. We'll keep it as is. Looks like another sieve up here. Sumer. I'm going to try and stay out of their detection range because I don't want to run into them with a warrior, but that does... Yeah, that's Sumer. Okay, so Gilgamesh is not too far north of us. And it looks like there might be more going on up here. Interestingly enough, because... 
I don't know. It just seems to... Unless that's just the glow of the map, which it could be. There could be another continent. Or just a coastline up there. All right, so how are we doing on this? I know I queued this up. Yeah, we're working on state workforce now, and then we're going to go to political philosophy so we can have the new government type. Some more horses. This warrior should be able to take on that barbarian encampment pretty easily, but I might need to fortify them for a bit in case there's a second unit nearby. I don't want to be stupid. It would suck to lose my warrior this early on. What was that? An unmet player has been defeated. I'm guessing that was a city-state. Interesting. Congo has actually put a city down there. They beat us to the punch. So we are going to have to go for our spot over here. Where did we pick? And of course, Auckland got the horses. Well, um, with Auckland getting the horses, that kind of changes things, doesn't it? We could go up here and try and get these horses. It was really the, the horses that was motivating that and the luxury resources. But there are other luxury resources that I could get, for instance, the jade. So I could put the city... Well, yeah, I'd have to put it north of these mountains to get those. Are there any other horses that I could grab? I mean, I could become suzerain of Auckland, and that's the plan, and we'll get the horses that way. So it's not the end of the world if I don't have those horses. Why couldn't you have gotten the sheep? Seriously, why couldn't you have gotten the sheep? That would have been... Much more considerate of you, just saying. Hang on, let me buy that trader really quickly while I'm thinking about it. All right. Yeah, I'm still going to do it. As far as development, we, we have to get this city over here. So I don't have to worry as much about being in range of the horses. Where can I put this city? For maximum benefits. Let's see. Because really now all we need is those... Luxury resources. So we could put the city right here. And it would be in range of a number of food tiles. And potentially grow a lot faster. It would not be in range of those, however. Hmm. Hang on. be on a hill tile, so it would definitely produce more. We would also have access to the luxury resources if we went here, but then we'd have far less food. If we went here, we would have more gold because of the crabs. So this would be a very rich city, but not it wouldn't grow as fast. I feel like we should probably go for a city that's going to grow faster, given where we are in the game. We could also, because we're putting the city there, we could put another city down there at some point. So let's go ahead and go for that peninsula. All right. Now we're still running into a little bit of a problem with uh, amenities. So we're going to need a builder. And I probably should go ahead and do that. But part of me also wants to go ahead and have a campus. Best spots for a campus require gold though. So let's go ahead and get that builder done. That's only going to be four turns. All right, we're going to try and finish off this this spearman. It might be a little dicey, though, because that quadrireem could sail around and give us some trouble. It's kind of annoying that they have a quadrireem already. Oh, good, they went the other way. All right, let's go ahead and knock these guys off. Depending on how far how far the quadrireem sailed away... Um, okay, good, promotion available. So we can give them a ranged defense promotion, maybe. Or just give them the combat promotion. So they do better against barbarians going forward. Meanwhile, let's get the scout back this direction. We've already scouted out these coastal tiles, so we need to get him moving up this direction into unexplored territory. And we also, after we're done with these next couple of projects, we're going to need to start see seriously considering... There we go. Knowledge of currency has advanced considerably. We're going to need to start seriously considering some military units. Also, we have amenity problems, which is hampering our growth. That builder could not get here soon enough. All right, warrior. Tell you what, let's move you back from... No, I'll go ahead and give you... Well, no. Let's move you back from the coast so that you're safe from that quadrium, and then we'll promote you next turn. Just to be 100% safe. We're two turns away from this builder. We 
Moving to turn 45. I actually wouldn't be surprised if England declared on us soon, because we are close to them. I'm creating a lasting legacy, because bronze will last for thousands of years. It okay. is equally important oh, we finished both. to have nice. a happy and engaged workforce, as it is to have a profitable bottom line. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do this, so I don't have to think about it later. We're going to switch to conscription, and then we have the extra production in all cities. And we're about to have a new government type, so that'll help us a little bit. Let's go ahead and get the scout out that direction. We're going to try and kind of skirt this. We'll encounter Sumer for the first time with that warrior. Give you battle cry. And bring you back down south. Yeah, we know Stonehenge has been built. Now what can we research next? So we finished bronze working. I'm thinking masonry. If we can go for the pyramids, that would be amazing. Um, but then again, we need to go for... Yeah, we've got some fishing boats off the coast that we're not taking advantage of yet. I think I should probably go for that next for just sheer growth purposes especially with the city spot we just chose. And then we'll think about our next tech, depending on what's happening. I'm not going to queue anything up while everything is so uncertain. Okay, Congo, you need to not do this to me right now. Seriously, move your frickin' scout. That's, del that's just delayed me by at least two turns. Oh my god. All right, so let's... <laughs> Sorry, it really grinds my gears whenever a, an AI, like, scout or a, a, a unit from a city-state, like, blocks my intended you know, expansion path. That annoys the ever-living out of me. I can't help it. So, because it's just sheer coincidence. They're not doing it on purpose. You know they're not. All right, so let's go ahead and get a slinger built. Ah, okay, can't see anything farther there. Okay, now, we ideally, and yeah, we need to get up here with the builder to see if we can get one of these luxury resources when we expand to it. The other option would be... No, we'll get up there with the Builder first. Nope, gotta skip my turn until Congo's done dicking around up there. Right, I'm gonna try and bring the Warrior back down without encountering Gilgamesh. Three turns away from a Slinger. More military units needed for sure. There you are! <laughs> that gentle, hunky voice. Yeah, sure you are. Well, hopefully we'll be friends. Would you like to visit our nearby city and sample our hospitality? Sure. All right, so he's got some war carts. Oh, great. Yeah, we're going to be great friends with your war carts. Thanks. Let's send a delegation. Gilgamesh has received your tributes and your envoy. He will let them enter Uruk. Yay. All right, let's get up there and actually establish that city now. Thank God. All right, we're going to bring this warrior back down. Extra reason to have it near this city now. Oh, interesting. There's a war cart much closer to me. Gilgamesh, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? All right, next turn we're going to be able to find, found that city. And then we'll be done with sailing in four turns. Peace be to you and yours. Actually, we'll be done with sailing immediately because it's a coastal city. It's hard to see another just as pious as myself. Wait, have you already got a religion? Why would Congo say that to me? Congo is always... Well, tell you what, let me send them a delegation. That way we can kind of stave off the possibility of multiple powers. Looks like Sumer is friendly with us. That's awesome. All right. Vessels large Perfect. may venture more, but little boats should keep near shore. All right, your research and sailing Vessels is now complete. Yeah, we just heard that. So, we've got this builder here now. Um, ideally, I mean, we don't have irrigation yet, so I can't actually improve those resources until we have that tech. So that's going to be next on the list. Because we need those right now. Tell you what, where would be the best spot to have you kind of camp out? I, I think I'd rather improve the citrus because it's, it's safer. It's farther away from enemy attack or potential areas of enemy attack. We're going to look up here with a scout as much as we can. All right, we've got this first slinger done. Probably could benefit from an encampment as soon as I can. Put it on this tile here. It would be a pretty good spot to protect the capital from any future attack. Let's do that. I like that idea. Now, keep the production focuses as they are. We're going to need that. <laughs> yeah. And we haven't farmed any resources yet. We could use one of the builder's charges to farm... Well, anything, really. But I think I'll hold off. It's just seven turns away, and we'll be fine. 
All right, so interesting choices here. We could go for a monument. Yeah, let's go for a monument because we're, we're playing on a high difficulty. I need to make sure I have as much science, as many culture points as soon as possible. We're going to bring this slinger over to Harahala Laya. <laughs> I'll get there. All right, scout. Okay, now we're uncovering a little bit more territory. He does have archers. Of course he does. Not surprised. There's a war cart. Okay. Um, I could go ahead and improve... Yeah, let's do this. Let's get that fish for Haralaya. And make sure that's actually in that city's <laughs> territory. It is. I want that fish to be for Angkor Thom, but this one can definitely be for that city. So that'll help a little bit. And then before long, how long is how much is that going to cost to buy? 105. Damn. And it's not growing to the next tile naturally. We're going to have to wait a good bit or find a way to get more gold income before we can get those in our territory. We are in a bit of a well, the other option is we can come over here with the builder. Let's do that. It's still going to be some turns away. But at least that way, it'll be seven turns, the irrigation will have just finished and we can get the silk. And then maybe that'll help with our amenity problem a bit because this is not good to be having this many, this many amenity issues early on. It just goes with playing on non-abundant resources, which I've been playing on. So it's not, I'm not quite as used to it, but it's, it's nice. We do have this uh, incense near us as well. So we have plenty of options, thankfully. All right, we're going to have that Khmer Slinger in place. And also, we'll be building more once these districts are done. Almost done with political philosophy. That's going to be a huge difference maker towards the end of this episode. All right, I need to get all the way up there with the scout. Let's actually send you... I don't care. Just go straight there. Beeline it. All right, and... Yeah, you go right here. Again, not going to go too wonder crazy in the beginning of the game here just because it would be counterproductive. We need to be producing stuff that doesn't take tons of turns. But mid and late game wonders, especially Eiffel Tower, considering the pantheon we chose, I'm going to be going for that for sure. Divide and rule a sound motto. Unite and lead a better one. Government unlocked. All right, so interesting choices, right? I mean, we could be doing a lot of fighting in a bit. So we can go for autocracy and have extra military policies. We can go for oligarchy and actually have... <clears throat> Excuse me, we could have extra... I don't know what just happened there. Uh, we can have extra experience for all of our combat units and the land melee unit. Yeah, oligarchy is going to be the way to go. Let's do that. That's clearly the way to go, I think. Plus two influence points per turn towards earning city-state envoys. That's also going to be useful. And should we go for another military policy so we can produce units faster? I think probably so, because we have an army to build. But also caravanseries, plus two gold from all trade routes. We need more gold, and faster. Tell you what, let's 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 do a go for a bit, but we're going to need to switch to uh, caravanseries before long. We have a solution to our amenity problem, so I'm not going to need to spend gold right now. Oh good, that iron's in our territory too, so we can add that soon. Okay, next, yep, military tradition, automatically. The reason I'm going for this is that we need the flanking and support combat bonuses for all combat units. And we also get the option of the Strategos policy. All right, we're almost done with our campus district in Harihalaya. Hari Haralaya. Done. And I can build a library right now if I wanted to. Also, let's take a quick look at our great profit progress. Nice! We are about to get our religion before the end of this episode. Fantastic. So we did have some stuff happen towards the end, thank God. All right, so this city, uh, we do need a holy site as well. And it looks like we've got a spot for one. I should go ahead and build it. It's, it's in our territory automatically. So I hate to do two districts in a row, but we need to get these down quickly. We're going for a religious victory, so that's it's just fundamentally true. Needs to happen. If I put you on food focus, you'll grow a little faster, won't you? Hmm. Not sure it's... Well, yeah, let's do it. That's three turns. That could be a, a difference maker. All right, we're going to get that silk improved, and I think we're going to get our great profits in the next turn. We have a lot of faith, too. The man who has grit enough to bring about the afforestation or the irrigation of a country okay. is not less worthy of honor than its conqueror. All right, so now we have hanging gardens, the access to hanging gardens. We have the ability to build plantations on all these luxury resources we've been needing and the ability to clear marsh as well for one-time growth boosts for cities. 
Uh, I am going to go for masonry because I, I'm feeling like there's a chance we can build walls around our cities and even potentially have pyramids. So uh, that's going to be an obvious next thing to do. And yeah, next turn we are going to get... I mean, we could purchase him with faith right now, but the Stonehenge has already been built. No one else is going for that great profit. We're getting pretty lucky with that. So I at turn 57... I don't value of military knowledge, but if men make war in slavish obedience to rules, they will fail. All right, so our progress towards military training, military training has advanced considerably, and our knowledge of mathematics, because of all of our districts, has advanced considerably. That'll help us get Petra faster. Military knowledge. Yeah, we just heard you, Sean. I, I really, I look forward to the day that they do away with that issue, where the quotes play twice. I am going to go ahead and go for mysticism, so we get access to the oracle. If we can still get the oracle, that would be awesome, and I will queue up drama and poetry to follow that, because access to the theater square construction project would be best. Yep, Siddhartha. Found our religion in a minute, but first, let's see, what should we build? It's probably time for a granary here, but we do, yeah, let's go ahead and get the granary going so that we have a little bit better growth there. Religion-wise, Mahayana Buddhism, again, going with traditional religious belief, the the, the belief of um, Jayavarman the seventh, he was Mahayana Buddhist. So let's confirm. Ooh, see, not many religions have been founded yet, so probably warrior monks, yep, let's... Uh, that's our option here. <laughs> They're a lot of fun. I can't wait to show you guys Warrior Monks. Uh, and then from a faith perspective, there's lots of good options here. We already have the ability to culture bomb with holy sites because we are Jai Varman. So burial grounds isn't necessary. Religious colonization is nice for religious civs because cities start with a religion in place as long as it's a majority religion. So as long as we're still expanding, that would be nice. Also, scripture is good, just because religious spread from adjacent city pressure is stronger, so this, the religion spreads more easily. Religious perspective, again, is good. We are also playing, however, on emperor difficulty, and things like Defender of the Faith are huge. And I actually think I am going to go for Defender of the Faith, simply to get that combat boost. Um, we'll go for, we'll see if we can get Dara Mer with our first apostles pretty soon, but I'm going to go for that. We're going to found the religion. Our progress towards theology has advanced considerably because we founded a religion. So our ability to get to our special building, which is, to remind you, the Prasat, which allows us to build those missionaries, which we can then get relics from. Um, looks like Congo has some units near us. I wonder what they're thinking about. Um, yeah, that's that's going to be added. We're going to have Prasat probably, I would imagine, by the end of the next episode. But speaking of the next episode, let me go ahead and stop this one here. Uh, well, first, let's move this builder over that silk, and we'll do that next turn. But uh, I'm going to seriously build... I'm, I'm going to build up my first attack force and see if we can free Cobble in the next episode. And we might need to get another city down here if I can pull that off uh, kind of a two-in-one, just so we can have a, kind of a power base installed before Congo gets really frisky. I'm a little worried they're going to try and conquer our city-state, so we might have to go to war with England to take a few of their cities, then make peace with her and then go down here and take Congo, or the other way around. See, Congo's capital is closer, so there's almost an argument for going for Congo first, but I have a worse relationship with England. She's already denounced me, so we're going to have to see how this goes. This is going to be a dicey next couple of episodes, and I'm, like, unreasonably excited about it. Hang on, let's go ahead and train up a missionary as well so that we can convert Hari Haralaya to our new religion. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at noon Eastern time, along with the rest of my historical and grand strategy content. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.